VLANs in a Grandstream network. How do you create them? Well, let me show you how. Hi, I'm Tim and you're watching Mr. Tim Tech on YouTube. If you've got a Grandstream network like myself at the moment and you want to know how to create VLANs, then let me show you how. As you can see on the screen at the moment, I've logged in to my GWN 7003 model router and also in the other tab I've logged into my GWN 7813 24 port switch. So what we need to do to create VLANs is first create them in the router so that the switch knows to send the data to the router and so that the router knows how to assign DHCP IP addresses and route the traffic and so on. So what we need to do first is from network settings at the left hand side menu pick this option and it will bring a drop down menu. Then from the drop down menu select LAN. This will take you into the LAN screen as you will see we have at the moment. So to create a VLAN what we need to do is click on add. So click on the add button as you can see at the top left corner of the LAN screen. This will then take you into the Add VLAN screen as you'll see we've got on display at the moment. So in the VLAN ID we need to select a range between 3 and 4094. So as you'll see we can only select 3 and not 1 or 2 because 1 is already allocated as the default LAN and 2 has been reserved in the GWN network manager for some reason. So what we'll do is select VLAN ID 3 and then for the name what we'll do is type in VOIP VLAN. So what we're going to do is put my voice over IP telephones in a VLAN of its own. For destination you can leave that set as all. Then for the VLAN port IPv4 address, click that slider and you'll have some additional boxes appear. So in the IPv4 address, what we'll do is type in the router VLAN address for our VLAN network. So we'll give this one an IP address of 192.168.3.1. For the default VLAN, which is VLAN ID 1, we have an IP address of 192.168.80.1 as you can see in the address bar at the top here. So what we'll do is keep the same range. So we'll do 192.168.3.1 for the router IP address for this VLAN. In the subnet mask we'll type in 255.255.255.0 so it gives the full range of IP addresses. So it will be a slash 24 network. Then for the DHCP service, we'll click that slider. And in the IPv4 address allocation range, we'll type in 192.168.3.11. So we'll start it at 11 so that we have 10 static IP addresses if we need to use them for any network devices on this VLAN. So at least there we have 10 reserved so then for the end IP address, we'll type in 192.168.3.254. So we have the range of 192.168.3.11 to 3.254 for DHCP IP address allocation. We'll leave the release time as default, which is 120. DHCP options, we'll leave those. But for preferred DNS server, We'll set the DNS server to the router's IP address for this VLAN, which again is the same as the IPv4 address above here. So we'll enter 192.168.3.1. Alternative DNS server, we'll leave that blank. And once we've done that, we'll just click save. Now that's, as you can see, taken us back into the LAN and the VLAN screen. And now we have two VLANs. So we have VLAN ID 1, which is default, and VLAN ID 3, which is for our voiceover IP telephones.
So now that we've created them in the router, we also need to create the VLAN in the switch as well. So as you can see, we're logged into the switch admin interface. So what we'll do is create the VLANs for the switch now. So to do this, you need to click on switching at the left hand side. This will bring a drop down menu as you can see. So what we need to do is select VLAN from that drop down menu. And in a second, this will load the VLAN screen on the switch. And as you can see, we have a similar screen to what we saw on the router. So what we need to do from this VLAN screen is click the add button. Then for the window that appears, we need to give the VLAN an ID. So of course it's VLAN ID three, which is the same as what we created on the router a moment ago. So once we've entered the VLAN ID, we'll click OK. Then what we need to do from the VLAN screen, you'll see we've now got two VLANs, VLAN ID one, which is default and VLAN ID three. So for VLAN ID three, what we need to do is click on the square button with a pen in it under the operation column. This will edit the VLAN ID. So click edit. Then what we need to do for the description, we'll change that to the same as what we did on the router. So we'll give it the same name of VOIP VLAN instead of VLAN ID three, we'll change it to VOIP VLAN. Then under the port section, and what we need to do is untag our two ports to which our voice over IP telephones are connected. Now I know by looking at the switch in my network cabinet that my voice over IP telephones are connected to ports 11 and ports 23 on the switch. So what we need to do is click on port 11. This will then put it as untagged and also port 23 again click on that and it should put it as untagged. Then for the uplink port, which is the port that connects our switch to our router, which I know is port 22, what we need to do is set that as tagged. So the two voice over IP telephone ports should be set as untagged. And then the uplink downlink port, which connects between our switch and our router should be set as tagged. So we'll click on the, that port and as you can see, it's now put it as tagged. So now that we've tagged those ports, we'll click on OK. Now that we've done that, you'll see it's taken us back to the VLAN screen and the list of VLANs. And as you can see, we now have tagged port for voice over IP VLAN port 22. And for the untagged ports, we have port 11 and 23. So now that we confirm that's correct, we'll click save. Then what we'll do is go to the port settings tab at the top. So what we need to do is select the ports that our voice over IP telephones are connected to again. So as you recall, one of them is on port 11. So here for port 11, what we'll do is click on the edit button, change the link type from trunk to access and for the PV ID value, we need to change it to our VLAN ID. So change it to three, which is our VLAN for voice over IP. And then again, for port number 23, change it to access, change the PV ID to three, click on OK. And now that we've done that for the two voice over IP telephone ports is click save. This is now saved successfully. So what we'll do is reboot the telephone. So I'll just go ahead and do that. It's sat next to me on the desk so I can easily reboot it from the device. And once it's rebooted, we should be able to check and see that it's picked up a new IP address in our VLAN ID range. And now that the phone is rebooted, what we'll do is go back to our router. So I'll select the router page and from the menu options, for the router, select clients at the left hand side. And from the list of clients, you'll now see that for VOI01, which is the top client, we now have an IP in our VLAN range of 192.168.3.101. So this confirms that our voiceover IP telephone 
has now moved across to our VLAN for VoiceOver IP and it's picked up a new IP address in our new VLAN. So that's how easy it is to set up VLANs on the Grandstream network. So what if you also need to put your wireless clients in the newly created VLAN? Well, to do this, what you would do is log in to your access point or if you're managing it with your router like I am, you would select SSIDs. Now this option would be the same in the actual access point interface or the router so select SSIDs then for the SSID that you want to put into the newly created VLAN what you would do is select the edit button under operations again this is the square with the pen in it so let's do this for example for 10G so with the edit SSID and basic information access security on screen what you would do is for associated VLAN option, move the slider across and then for the VLAN box, click the box and it will bring the drop down list of created VLANs. So you would select the relevant VLAN and click save. This will then put that SSID or that wireless network, whichever you want to call it, into that newly created VLAN. So of course click save and that would do that. So I hope you found this video useful. Keep a look out, more videos are coming soon. And in the next Grand Stream video what I'll be doing is creating firewall rules to prevent clients from seeing other clients in other VLANs and accessing devices in those other VLANs as well. Thanks for watching, take care, bye for now.